Hello, Darshan Maharaja here. I'm sure you are aware of the explosive developments today and that may be putting it mildly. Uh, I had actually planned to make a different video on a different subject. I had announced that on Twitter yesterday. I had visited the uh, protests, ongoing protests by international students in Brampton. I had gone there yesterday. Yesterday was busy, so I thought, uh, you know, I'll make a video on that today. But uh, when I woke up in the morning and checked my phone, that is everybody's morning ritual now. And I saw this development and I said, oh boy, uh, like Canada-India relations are on the brink of total collapse. That was my first reaction when I saw the uh, communication from the Indian government. And then later on, uh, as the morning progressed, uh, I think it is fair to say that we have continued to move in that direction. Uh, frankly, I don't think there is any walking back from this unless a third country that is mutually friendly uh, intervenes uh, because uh, India has uh, withdrawn uh, or recalled six of their uh, uh, diplomats from Canada. Canada announced that they are being expelled. Now, India says that they are expelling six of Canadian diplomats. That is normal tit for tat, except for the number of diplomats involved. But uh, the kind of language that the Indian government has used is inconceivably rare in uh, diplomatic circles. I'll give you an example. And I learned this from a former diplomat, uh, you know, that if when two leaders of two countries meet and uh, they are unable to agree on whatever the subject of their meeting was, the communication will not say that they disagree. It will say that the two leaders agreed for further discussions on this matter. So if you are used to uh, reading diplomatic language, you understand that they disagreed. Otherwise, it would seem like they agreed on something. And then further, if, uh, if the statement says that the two leaders agreed to pursue further discussions in this important matter, that means that there was some fundamental disagreement. Because for them to call it an important matter means that there was some kind of fundamental disagreement. And if it says that this was a, an important matter for both the countries, then you have to interpret that to mean that there is a deadlock. That is the uh, that is the standard or the custom in diplomatic circles. So you know they use very mild language, and in that world, for uh, the government of one country to say that we do not trust the government of the other country, and naming the leader that we do not trust Justin Trudeau's government to keep our diplomats safe. Now. As Canadians, of course, this rankles us, but consider this. Uh, a couple of days ago, when there was this uh, Indian or Hindu festival, although Sikhs also uh, celebrate that, called the Sera, uh, when that was being uh, celebrated, there was police uh, uh, protection outside the uh, Indian diplomatic mission which means it could not be taken for granted that this uh, location would be safe and therefore the people inside would be safe. So that is the pass at which our relations are, where the uh, other government feels that our, their diplomats are not necessarily safe. They need police protection, not in the normal course of civilian life. So uh, for them to say that... Uh, you know, we do not trust this government, one can at least see their point of view. The question is, where does this go now? Uh, before anything else could be done to uh, patch up, we had this uh, press conference by RCMP where they have again made uh, uh, accusations against the Indian government. And this is the uh, tricky part of because the matter is before the courts, they cannot be uh, specific about the individuals or the incidents or whatever they are looking in. 
at the same time, probably for political reasons, they are having to uh, hold a press conference. Now, normally, police forces don't comment on ongoing investigations. So why this press conference was necessary in the view of uh, the leadership at RCMP, I don't know. Maybe there is some justification that I am missing. But presently, I don't see it. So all told, the uh, situation is extremely grim. The only uh, one step remaining now uh, is for both countries to shut down their diplomatic missions and break off uh, diplomatic relations with each other. We hope that that doesn't happen because then there will be a lot of difficulty for people on both sides, including uh, trade. So, uh, for example, the province of Saskatchewan uh, exports roughly $1 billion worth of uh, lentils or pulses to India every year. Now, if that uh, gets hit, then, of course, Saskatchewan takes a hit, and I don't like that one bit. Uh, the farmers will suffer. On the other side, uh, it's difficult to find uh, alternative supplier for that much quantity, half a million tons of lentils. So uh, it could lead to inflation, etc., shortages. So both sides' uh, stakes are very high. And uh, we'll keep watching and we'll keep hoping that uh, this gets sorted out. Uh, it's, you know, the timing of this uh, makes me wonder. Because uh, Prime Minister Trudeau was uh, attending that international uh, meet, uh, ASEAN meet uh, last week where he met Prime Minister Modi of India. And uh, when he was coming back, we were initially told that uh, there was this uh, revolt brewing in his caucus, which he wasn't aware of because his aircraft doesn't have Wi-Fi. That is what we were told. And that came as uh, something incredible to almost everyone. And then later on, you know, efforts were made to walk that back. But notwithstanding, that's a separate uh, controversy. But basically, he has a revolt uh, on his hands in his caucus. Uh, at least 30 or 40 of his own MPs want him gone. And uh, in parliament, uh, the inquiry into foreign interference, uh, I think uh, as the week begins on Tuesday, uh, the Prime Minister's office and the Prime Minister himself uh, are scheduled to uh, appear at that inquiry. So times are tough for Prime Minister Trudeau. And uh, this could be a distraction uh, where nothing of substance has been added to the previous allegations, but the issue has... Uh, started taking up all the oxygen in the room. Now, there is also a possibility that uh, Prime Minister Trudeau may prorogue parliament and buy time for himself and his party. Uh, that is one possibility. So in the midst of all that turmoil, while why this uh, allegation had to be uh, revived at this point in time, is a question that only the insiders will have an answer to. And I don't think they are uh, going to talk, at least not uh, uh, not too soon. We'll keep watching and we'll uh, keep hoping that uh, the, the relations between the two countries get uh, back on track. Although it seems difficult now, hope springs eternal. I'll see you in the next video. Until then, goodbye and be well.